Welcome to Haxby Shed on another beautiful September day and part four of making the x-axis table nut for my Harrison mill. And in this video we finish the Delrin prototype and we cut the threads in the bronze. I hope you find it useful. Well I did cut this with a hacksaw and I trimmed it on the lathe. I had an idea to use a slitting saw in the tool holder on the lathe but I couldn't get the angle right. I didn't want to change any of the settings which I've made to cut the threads. So maybe next time. Anyway, I've put a mark on this. It's there. I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to put in two indexing pins 180 degrees apart into both sides of the bush so it will hold the two sides in the same relative position so that one can't spin against the other and lock up. So those are my two pins, three millimetres uh, they're not mild steel, they're something a bit harder. And I've used the original bronze bush to set this up because it's just easy to see what I'm doing. And to index the two parts correctly, I've put that mark, which is on both halves, in the centre of that jaw there. So then hopefully it'll maintain the relationship and then keep that approximately one millimetre separation. You can see there is a bit of wiggle on this and it's because I'm using a spring-loaded indexing pin. Later on I'm going to replace it with a plain screw. I've set a stop on this to be about six deep. Well that's done. I didn't quite get the indexing right. I've got a little displacement between one mark and the other. You can maybe see it. It's about, what, a quarter of an inch, something like that. So they're a bit closer together than I planned, so I'll have to watch that when I do it in bronze. But otherwise, it works, because you see I turn this one, and it's locked to this half, and then if we squeezed either side, well on those pins, it would squeeze together and take out the backlash. That's the idea. So as a prototype, I'd say that works. So the job now, is to repeat the whole thing in bronze. So I'm going to use the longer piece, it's just easier to work with. I'm going to machine the outer to make the blank, drill it through the centre. That's another one for the gentleman who wanted to see more machining. I'm very nervous about parting at the moment. After a recent disaster you might have seen. It's coming I think. Well I've got the blank made. I've put a score line on it there so that when I cut it I can always line that up. That pen is pointing to the gap between the bearing assembly and the body and it's about one and a half millimetres. I can always make that smaller later if I need to. So now we come to cut the thread for real and I'm going to take it in quarter millimetre steps which is about ten thou. So I've created my checklist here. There's about ten cuts on there. That'll get me to 2.5 mil thread depth and then we might have another couple after that at point one. So I've got my dial set, it was zero when this was just scratching on the inside. I've set my compound slide to zero and my cross slide was set to zero but I've added quarter of a millimetre from this zero point here. I've started off at five millimetres on the small dial in there so that I don't run out of travel on my gauge. The spring in that tool, isn't there? Well, I'm having some dramas with this. 
the bar was just bending. The tool wasn't cutting properly. At one point the tool came loose and sprang across that way. I had to reset the cutting tip to give it more rake. I turned it like this so this edge was higher to give it more rake but also I got the tool set a little bit low. I've just moved the tool up by maybe a millimetre and it's transformed the whole thing. Well we're still in the game. I'm making several passes with each cut. I'm still putting on a quarter of a millimetre so now I'm going to increase my cut to 2.25 millimetres. So I'm going to put a quarter on here. I've got this dial on zero. I'm in forward. I'm saying this for myself partly. So we're going to make a quarter of a millimetre cut plus whatever spring was left in the bar. Something horrible has happened. Oh dear. Well what's happened is, same as last time actually, the cutting tool has jumped back. Now I don't know how much damage that has done. All I can do is keep going. I'll reset this, we'll keep going, keep our nerve. Well we're really in a mess now. This banjo plate has dropped. I don't know, maybe I didn't tighten it up enough. That's probably what happened. And it's possibly disengaged these teeth. Well if that's the case I've completely lost my index. I don't know if I can finish the nut. Hmm. Well although those gears were making a horrible noise, I don't think they actually slipped because I've wound this in by hand. And I think you can see that tool is registered. Well, we'll keep going, we've no choice. We're nearly there with this. I've cut to 2.8 on the dial. And it tightens fine at this front end, but it gets about three turns in and it's starting to tighten up. So it's still a problem with the spring in that bar. So I'm just gonna keep going over and over and over. If it takes me 20 times, I'll do it until this will run all the way through. I really don't want to cut anymore. It should be fine at that. And then we'll find out if we got away with that problem of the gears maybe slipping, maybe didn't slip. If this does work, I'll have used up all of my lives for the next year. Well, we've done it against all the odds. So mistake number one, putting the cut on the cross slide rather than the compound. Mistake number two and three, I suppose, twice the tool slipped within that bar and I had to reset it. And the fourth, the really big one, was I didn't tighten up the banjo fully. From this side, everything looks good. But from the back side, I've examined my conscience. I'm gonna make another with this little bit that I've got. Just enough, I think. I'll bring you back when I've done it. What I mean is when I've finished the second nut. If you don't hear from me, it's because I've messed up. Well, some two and a half hours later, because it's always quicker the second time, third time, if you include the Delrin, we've got a nut without any mistakes, I hope. One thing I did was this tool here, I ground a flat on it at this side, only so far along, so that it held it true and it couldn't pop out the back like it did. Where's the chuck key gone? Anybody seen the chuck key? Chuck key? Oh here we are. So that's a runner. Well, they both look about the same from that side, but turn them over. This is the old one, and that's the new one. 
and that fits absolutely perfectly so it was worth doing again and there's almost no wear on that lead screw it's no more tighter at one end than the other really or in the middle I don't know if I said this is gunmetal bronze SAE 660 so here's the evolution so far Delrin chewed up thread Delrin good thread bronze sort of okay but damaged at the back here on this side as you can see but also I can now tell by looking at this one these teeth are thinner so I'm now sure that the lathe gear train for the screw cutting gearbox had slipped a couple of teeth when that banjo plate moved and it gives you some idea how much strain there is on that gear train when you're cutting really coarse threads and this one is good to go so I'm going to uh, cut the splines on this one I'm going to slice it put the pins in like I did with this test one so I'm going to make this into the fully finished product, albeit it's kind of junk, before I try this one. I don't have any more bronze, I can't afford to make any more mistakes. When I cut the splines on here, it went in okay into the body, but of course there's a bit of give and spring on these, which there isn't on the bronze. So it'll be a good test to make sure I've got my depth of cut right on this bronze nut. Before I move on to this one, the setup should be all good. I can lock two axes of the lathe milling, sorry, milling machine table, um, and it should be just to put it in a straight cut once I get it right for the splines. unlock clockwise drop in take up the backlash lock read seven and a half degrees so that looks about right off we go I can see quite a crest on there it's quite pointy between those two we'll see whether it's too much or not I'm about two-thirds of the way round and I've been called away for babysitting duties another one of my jobs this head is getting hot too hot and I've only used it to cut these it's running at about 1500 rpm and I suspect the person who stripped this down you know the expert who cocked it up in several places has probably got those bearings too tight because I can see they've been adjusted and do you remember we have the same problem on the spindle bearings on the lathe when I run it at high speed the head was getting very hot very quickly and I only had to back off those bearings a fraction I'm gonna to have to take this cover off I'm gonna to have to check these not now I'll finish this job get this nut done and then I'm gonna to have to come back to this honestly I really thought I'd finished on this head it doesn't look like it now well back from babysitting and well, I've got all the way round so now I'm going to drop the table try the nut on if I need to machine more I can do it then without disturbing this I've put a clock on the table over here and I know what it's set to on the dial as well so I've got two ways of making sure I come back to the same position I've tried to tap this in and it's not going all that well but I've tried from this side so I'm going to go through from this side and press it in I can see it shaving it slightly so I'm tempted 
to machine this end of this nut now, go through the whole 48 again and see if it fits. Now I could, I could force this in, this end in, and it would shave it in, but that's not really what I want to do. I've done the 48 cuts on this side. I moved up 0.2 of a millimetre. I think that might be a fraction too much. I think 0.15 would have been right, but if this is slightly loose, I'll just drop it down a fraction. It's a little bit tighter in some positions than others. It, it depends on the indexing, so something's slightly off centre. But it goes in and out easy enough there. So I think I've taken a fraction too much off. That's what it amounts to. So I took 0.2 of a millimetre off and I think 0.1 would have been nearer to it. And it's just scratched this ledge here at one side. I mean, taking it in and out of this three-jaw chuck and the three-jaw chuck on the lathe is going to give me a bit of an eccentricity by a few thou anyway. Don't know if you can see that scratching there. Probably won't focus for you. Just there and over this side, there's no marks on this ledge here. Chief Inspector has returned. Now then, can you see anything? Mm. I think the hat's, that's it. <laughs> can I go now? Mm. I'm going to come too. Yeah. <laughs> no speak. No. <laughs> what do you think? Do you like Axby Shed? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so do I. I think it's okay, isn't it?